Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be filling up um, the sketchbook. Um, I have like a few pages left, so I'm going to be drawing and just chatting with you. Oh yeah, look at my mug. It's Santa! It's nowhere near Christmas yet, but I'd like to think it's Christmas all the time, so let's get our tea ready. You should probably get your own drink because this video might be a little long. So to make this a little more interesting, I'm going to be um, using this app to... I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to be using this app to choose what medium I'll be using. Um, but I'm going to just fill up two pages, so let's see what we get. Graphite or black colored pencil. That's a little boring, but okay. Should I use this? In a minute, I'm gonna be switching to voiceover because I tried doing this video um, just a few days ago and I was either drawing and not talking or just talking and not drawing. So we're gonna move on to a voiceover after I choose what to use today. You know what, I'm just gonna use this today. Let's just keep it simple. Okay, so voiceover, Naisu here. Hi. <laughs> so if the lighting keeps changing throughout the entire video, that's the sun's fault today. So I've been getting requests to do videos like this for a while now. I already post so much ASMR, so I might as well balance it out with some occasional rambling oh yeah in the video i'm using faber castell's polychromos colored pencil i've been using colored pencils a lot more than graphite lately since they just don't transfer as much and i don't actually like how graphite performs on this paper specifically this is the monologue a5 hardcover sketchbook and don't get me wrong it's good quality the paper is thick it has some tooth in it and it holds most media pretty well like gouache ink pastels acrylic and a little watercolor but i don't know maybe i just prefer using like a smoother paper when it comes to graphite that might be a little weird since most of the artists i know personally like having a little more tooth on their paper when drawing with pencil but yeah maybe it's just a me thing i don't know i really like the canson basic sketching paper for just graphite sketches yeah <laughs> um as usual i had no plans on what to draw for this video um i ended up just sketching this really pretty house i found on pinterest um i've been wanting to be less afraid of drawing landscapes and stuff so just doodling like this and not really thinking much has been really good for me and i'm not really trying to practice or study so perspective can just excuse itself for today but yeah um i think it's time that i talk to you about all the books i've been reading um i'm gonna allow myself to ramble a lot more than i do at the end of my vlogs but you asked for it so here we go <laughs> so i'm gonna go in order of when i finished them so how do you live by Ginzaburo Yoshino? This was a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me. So I picked this up because I found out that this is the book that the new Studio Ghibli film is going to be based off of. And just look at this cover. Like, do you see how pretty this is? Anyway, this was originally published in 1937 and it follows a boy named Copper. Wait, no, that's not actually his name. That's a nickname his uncle gave him based off of Copernicus, which I think is actually really cute and fitting for his character. But um, anyways, we follow him through his coming of age, his life in school, the bond he has with his friends, and just the lessons he learns along the way. It's also mixed with very philosophical letters that his uncle writes to him and i don't know i just it's just a very thoughtful book in my opinion it made me ponder and 
reflects a lot about life and well what it means to live i guess <laughs> um it's very quiet and it emphasizes a lot of the very ordinary things that happens in life the letters copper's uncle sent him are letters that i wish i got to read when i was younger but even so i still feel like everything he said in those letters um still applied to the me now i think they'd apply to everyone really but yeah um i'm super excited to watch the studio ghibli adaptation because i actually don't know how they're gonna go about um making this i'm hoping that it's gonna be just as wholesome as the book the secret history by donna tart okay so i have so much to say about this one i gave it a solid but very unexpected five stars and i'll talk about that in a minute um basically we follow this student named richard papin or papin i don't know how you say his last name um but he gets entangled with this group of very pretentious but beautiful literature students studying greek under a very eccentric classics professor in this elite new england college and just the more time richard spends with these people he realizes that their lifestyle their minds and hearts may not be as beautiful as he once thought so that's really all I'm gonna say about it because that's all I knew going into the book and the experience was fantastic so I'd like to tell you just that. This has been recommended to me so many times by you guys, by booktubers, by people in my personal life, etc. Um, but I don't know, for some reason I just didn't think that I would like it so I put it off for so long. Um, when a book is just so popular, I tend to feel more hesitant about picking it up because there have been times when my opinion of a well-loved book doesn't exactly match everyone else's and the first dark academia book I ever read, I ended up DNFing. It was um, If We Were Villains, I think, and because of that, I thought dark academia just wasn't for me secret history is supposed to be like the blueprint of dark academia so you know i think you kind of get where my headspace was at going into this but my best friend really wanted to buddy read this together so i had to read it and i'm just so happy that i did my initial thoughts and expectations couldn't have been more wrong and i absolutely just fell in love with the book the writing was a lot more accessible than i thought it would be many people call this like a modern classic so i kind of thought that i would have like difficulty reading it but it was so easy to get into it was so atmospheric and i felt odd reading it it just felt cozy but unsettling and creepy at the same time i couldn't trust anyone in here but i love it when a book can do that i enjoyed reading about the characters they're horrible people first of all but they have nuances so that made them feel just so much more real and i couldn't exactly hate them you know what i mean and i don't know i'm not gonna lie i was sort of rooting for them but not completely because you know i don't condone their actions or whatever it reminded me a lot of how to get away with murder that's like one of my favorite tv shows ever and they're not exactly the same the show is a lot grittier and just more realistic overall um maybe because um in the show uh it featured law students but in this book the secret history follows these literature students so the story is a lot more poetic and mellow and crazy i think because i don't know they just felt like people who had nothing else to do with their time seeing how many messed up things they were willing to do 
um, to try in the pursuit of knowledge and pure curiosity or whatever. They're horrible people, but I loved reading about them. You know, I understand the hype, I get why everyone is so obsessed with it. It's just so fascinating. It definitely deserves all the love it gets. Um, I read the digital copy for this, but now I desperately wish that I got the physical copy. I might purchase it whenever I decide to reread this because... I'm pretty sure I'm gonna reread it one day. So thank you so much to everyone who recommended this. Yeah. The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is the third book of the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. I gave this another five stars. Or was it like a 4.5? Mm, I don't remember. For some context, I'm gonna tell you like a little bit about the first book. So in this world, humanity has advanced to a point where misery, pain, sickness, hunger, and even mortality are taken care of. They're not really problems that exist anymore. But since people can't die from natural causes, there needs to be a way to keep the balance. So there's this group of people ordained to glean you or basically like um, take your life to keep the population at bay. And these people are called scythes because they have this kind of um, right and power. They have to be moral and humble and righteous and all that. Um, so we follow two main protagonists, Citra and Rowan, and they were chosen to become apprentices of a scythe. And basically the story goes on from there. Um, the story really expands throughout the books. Even in the first book, you can see that um, it's just it's it's great <laughs> as you keep following the story the world just gets bigger and bigger but it was done so well because i never lost the plot or the characters in the story but i also didn't know enough to predict what was going to happen or what the characters were gonna do so you know that's like top tier storytelling to me especially for YA. The blurb I told you about the first book is so surface level compared to what the story is actually about. Um, this uh, book or series, trilogy, um, overall touches on politics, gender, justice, ethics, <laughs> morals, and values, what it means to be fair and just, what it means to be a good person, a compassionate person, literally like the opposite of <laughs> the secret history. The system this world followed is so creative. I don't think I've ever read or watched anything that had a similar concept. Um, if you've read this and you know any stories with like similar vibes, I guess, please tell me because I'd love to read them. The plot is just so good and on top of that, the characters, the main characters specifically, were just and fair and good but they never ever acted as if they were all that, you know? They constantly reflected on their actions, constantly questioned their thoughts, and even though they did their best to be objective and unbiased, the author never hid like the very human desires they had. I don't know if they just felt so real and so admirable because they weren't characters that were just naturally good you know they chose to be that way despite the temptations they're like the type of people that i would follow and listen to in real life the villains in this story i didn't like them but i think that's the point like why would you like a villain oh, well i guess there are some stories where i kind of admired the villain i don't know but this story the villain was just so annoying but i guess that made it good i don't know Oh yeah, I've decided to start mentioning books that I don't finish because lately I've been learning how to DNF more in order to read more and I've noticed that I usually fall into reading slumps when I force myself to read books that I'm not really feeling at the time, so yeah. I only have one DNF to tell you about for now and I hope none of you will hate me for it because it's Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. It's not like I didn't enjoy it, it's just that I was taking so long to finish it. Now, trust me, 
I really want to get into classics, but I just can't seem to push through most of the ones I try to read. I read Pride and Prejudice for school and I just despised the experience because my mental dictionary at the time just wasn't wide enough to understand what was going on. I don't know, I just feel like that kind of ruined them for me. I hope not, but I just can't seem to get through them. Maybe I'm just not a classics person. I've tried picking up very many classics and none of them just seem to stick except to kill a mockingbird but again read that for school so maybe i'm not picking the right books i don't know hopefully one day i'll enjoy them a bit more but for now my brain just doesn't process the stories very well yeah next i read arabella by georgette hayer now this one i did finish Kinda ironic how I said I couldn't push through classics, but my best friend really liked this and it just felt wrong not to finish it because <laughs> she liked it so much. Anyway, she's so good at reading classics. I don't know how she does it, but I find it admirable. This is a historical romance classic. It's about a girl named Arabella, obviously. She doesn't come from any money but her family was still able to let her debut into society. On the road to London, her carriage breaks down and she ends up asking help from this really handsome and extremely wealthy man, of course. She overhears him say that he thinks the broken carriage was just her excuse to pursue him and this irked her so much she ended up spewing lies about being an heiress and whatever but the man didn't fall for it he just went along with it and the story goes on from there i enjoyed it there were still many words i did not understand but i enjoyed it it was cute and fun and i had a nice time Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Um, this is the sequel to Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. If you don't know what the story is about, this is a compilation of short stories all set in this cafe um, that allows time travel. But there are a bunch of rules that you have to follow in order to actually do that. So basically you have to sit on a very specific table in the cafe, but most of the time um, a ghost sits there, so you have to wait for her to leave before you can even try to time travel. Um, you can't meet anyone who's never visited the cafe. You can't change the present or the past when you do meet them. What else? You can't leave your seat uh, while you're back in time and you have to finish your coffee before it gets cold or else you'll turn into the ghost who has to sit in the cafe yeah the stories in here felt a lot more connected than the first book there seems to be a bigger plot that intertwines everything now um i feel like it kind of answered a lot of whys i wouldn't call them plot holes but it just added more context to the story that the first book didn't have for some reason though i didn't connect to the characters that much it didn't make me cry like the first book did we did however get to see much more of kazu in here she felt a lot more human in this and the next book that's coming out soon i think is gonna be following kazu and her story maybe that's just a guess so yeah Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Um, this is a four-star book for me. Probably the shortest book I read so far in the year. It didn't take me much time to finish it at all. Um, this was another one of the more popular books that I was a bit hesitant to read. The premise just doesn't sound like something I usually like. It's basically about a 36 year old woman named Keiko who works at a convenience store in Japan and yeah that's it. I really enjoyed it though, surprisingly. It felt so cozy and quiet but 
really quirky in its own way, probably because of the main character. Um, the woman we follow in the story is so unapologetically apathetic, and the way she viewed the world was just so fascinating and interesting to me. I just really liked her. I couldn't relate to her even a little bit, but I admired her so much. I don't know why. Some of the side characters in here made me quite upset because of how they treated Keiko. I don't know why, but I felt very protective of her. She just enjoys working in this convenience store, and I just was so frustrated with the people who kept telling her that she couldn't do that. I wish it could have been longer though. This would have been a five star read for me if we got to delve a little more into Keiko's story, but yeah. Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. I don't know if that's how you say your name. <laughs> um, this one I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It's a contemporary romance about a girl who needs to bring a date to her sister's wedding because her ex is gonna be there, so uh, she ends up bringing a fake boyfriend who also happens to be a co-worker she absolutely hates. So basically, grumpy sunshine, enemies to lovers, fake dating, and office romance. Um, <laughs> I think these are tropes that we've all seen before in the romance genre. Um, I picked this up because I saw that a lot of people compared it to The Love Hypothesis and I really enjoyed that book, so I thought this would be just as amazing. It was cute. Um, I didn't like it as much as I hoped I would. The story kind of dragged for me in certain parts and I didn't really like the spicy scenes in here. I found them a little cringy. Trust me, I've read my fair share of spicy romance, okay? I'm not- it's not like I don't like it. I do, but for some reason in this book, I just didn't. I only really liked the more quiet moments they had together and the parts where um, she talked a little more about her family. Not much else to say for this. Lastly, we have Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Namju. Another book with a story I don't usually read, but this was so good. I picked this up randomly at the bookstore because of the cover. Just look at how gorgeous this is. I love the colors. The inside of the cover is filled with hard-hitting quotes from the book and it's just the design is everything to me. <laughs> Anyways, um, about the book. Uh, this is about the misogyny that women in South Korea have been dealing with, basically. We follow the story of this woman, Kim ji -young, as her psyche slowly deteriorates because of that discrimination and inequality. Um, it really showed how her experiences throughout her life eventually made her quote-unquote lose it. Uh, there's just really only so much anyone can take. You know, not gonna lie, the writing wasn't really anything spectacular and the characters were not the most memorable. They're not, they weren't very special, but I think that was part of the point. The main character in this book um, was supposed to represent the millennial every woman and just the message that this book was trying to get across definitely hit the mark for me. Many parts of this book just made me so angry and so upset and I was so hurt for Ji Young. Um, this is the first Asian feminist book I've ever read and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the start of my reading many more in the near future. Um, I don't know, it just feels like such an important read, so if there's anything I'm gonna recommend from all the books that I've mentioned so far, this is definitely the first on the list. Apparently there's a movie adaptation as well, so I'm actually gonna watch that with my mom later after I record this. 
but yeah i think that's all the books i've been reading lately um as you can see there are some that i liked and some that just didn't work for me but overall i think august was a really really good reading month for me um oh yeah and by the time you're watching this i'll be 22 because i'm posting this on my birthday um i don't know how i feel about that yet <laughs> i'm trying not to think about it too much but it is a little crazy you know growing up and stuff um sometimes i feel like life is just passing me by and there's really not much i can do about it um i would like to pause if i could do that but yeah, this little community we have going on here has been so lovely and I really like how I can talk to you about all the things I like and that you like them too and we share recommendations with each other. It's all really nice. So um, thank you so much for being here and yeah, let me know what you've been reading lately, what your thoughts are on any of the books I mentioned, if you've already read them, if you have any recommendations and just how you're doing in general feel free to ramble about everything i like reading rambles just as much as you like to listen to me ramble anyway um enough cheese for today um thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video whenever that may be bye